On this episode, it's a good one. I like it actually. That's what this episode's about. It's a really solid three episodes in a row. Killer. This is Gary Vaynerchuk, and this is episode 227 of the Ask Gary V Show. I gotta tell you, what's today, Wednesday? Three episodes in a row, India. Get over here. Don't be scared. I know the table's small for some weird reason all of a sudden. What happened to your, oh, it was broken. It was broken, it was broken. It was broken. You saw that? With Simon. It was a good episode. A lot of great feedback from the Simon episode, India. A lot of people were excited to see you again. People, did you see all the tweets? I'm like, wait, India still works at Vader. People thought you got fired. I loved it. Um, fired? Well, yeah, you, you'd clearly, if you were not going to be here anymore, it would be more about you being fired. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, there's a, Tyler, am I doing one tomorrow? What? Ask Gary V tomorrow? Yes. No? We gotta sneak one in because I think I can go five days this week. That would be huge. All right, fight for it. Uh, yeah, so all things are good. I'm very focused. I feel the shows have been really good this week. Like from the quality of the content, I don't think I've been as entertaining, but I think that the, the answers have been strong. Obviously the saltiness, oh by the way, we have to do one tomorrow because I have to make, give my Jets prediction. I had a strategy of not doing predictions this year. It didn't work week one. So I'm gonna give a prediction tomorrow against Chris Saka's Buffalo Bills. India, let's get into the show. Yo. What's up with the videos? You guys are Yeah, they're obsessed with them. Who? Do we only do videos now? Is that, did we agree to do that actually? I mean, we've always tried to aim for more videos. All right, we're gonna do a lot more videos. Uh, If you wanna get in the show, use the hashtag AskGaryV and uh, submit more video questions, I'm into it. Hi Gary, this is Jelle from Belgium. Uh, first off, I want to start with thanking you for putting out all that content. Um, I've been an entrepreneur for over five years now and I feel like that I'm becoming a better businessman, a better entrepreneur thanks to your content and insights. So thank you for that. This is my question. I've been working together with a few interns for a couple of years now and they're always around 21 years old and I feel that they're lacking two important skills. The first skill is critical thinking or self-criticism. They should uh, think about what should I do first and what next. Uh, Why am I advising this? Um, Is what I produced really good enough? And the next, the second skill is taking ownership. When all given tasks are finished, do they start thinking about what the next best step could be? Um, Do you have any idea? how I, as a boss, as a guide, can help them develop their skills. Thanks. Yeah, listen, I think that, um, I think that the answer to your question is the critique that you are putting on them. You are critiquing them for this kind of thoughtfulness, critical thinking, and then action, and taking the initiative and being on the offense. Uh, My answer to you is you need to do the same with you as a boss and you need to audit yourself to do that. Meaning, there is no reason that you should be in a scenario where you're struggling with 21 year old interns for a long period of time because the truth is if you put the time and effort to really audit them and really spend time with them and then decide for you, whether you're right or wrong, as the judge and the jury, as the boss, that they're good or they're not good, you could speed up this process very quickly. So my answer to you is go deep and spend more time with them, whether that's virtually or in reality, you know, or in real life, whether wherever you, where these interns are, figure out if they're good, give them very detailed feedback at scale, suffocate all the excuses, and then make a decision whether that person should be in your organization or not. For me, if I wanted to know if anybody here should be in my organization or not, it would literally take me two days. Like, you, you just make it the thing you do today. Today, you should decide if these interns are capable, have the talent and the capacity to deliver on your expectations or not. Have you been clear in them? 
and, uh, and move forward. So I, I think the answer to your question is, in the same way that you're upset with them that when their task is done, they're not doing the next thing, I'm upset with you, which is if you slept last night, you could have allocated some of those hours to auditing your interns and giving them clear feedback and making the decision if you wanted them here or not. Let's do it. Buster. Buster. Question for you. Now, I know what you did at age 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, getting involved in wine and selling sports cards, but what would you be doing if it were 2016 and you were 12, 13, 14, and 15, and 16? Appreciate your answer, appreciate everything you do. Thanks. Buster, Buster, Buster. Honestly, what I would tell you is to give you the answer that you're looking for, which is what, what would I do, if, what should you be doing, how should you be thinking about things, reverse engineer your strengths, right? You like the NBA, you should hit up Dunk first of all and have him put you on. But besides that, I think that you need to figure out what you're good at and what would you wanna do. I would basically be today, I'm trying to think, there'd be so many things I'd be doing today. Like, I give a lot of that advice. I would've made bank on Snapchat filters. I, I think that one guy who did the Pokemon Go consulting, I think that was super smart. The, having the internet to buy and sell. I'm a salesman. Buying and selling, ugh. Just buying stuff on, uh, you know, in Asia and remarketing in the US. I, I think I'd be doing pretty much everything I was doing at scale. So because when I was growing up, sports cards are what people collected, I would just be focused on whatever that version is now. S- I, sneakers, I'm telling you right now, I would be, my stories of Toys R Us and garage sales would be waking, would be waking up you know, at one in the morning and standing in line at a, at a Soho sneaker store to get that thing flipping. Like, I would be doing a lot of that. Um, and so you know, I think the truth is, Buster, I'd be focusing on what I was strong at. And what I think I'm really good at is buying and selling. I did that with stuff my whole life. Now I do it with people's attention and the end consumer's attention. That is my strength and I would double down on that. You, my friend, need to figure out what you're best at. Is that making content on social media? Is that being a charismatic personality that I think was shining through in that question? Is that, is that being a salesperson, buying, selling stuff, connecting with people? When you're 16, you have time. Like, Jesus. Remember when you were bored? Remember when you could do that? Andy, remember when you were like, I'm bored. Like, you don't have that kind of time when you grow up. And so I would take advantage of that time because that is the asset. Remember being bored? Yeah. That was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon. Brandon. Hey Gary, my name is Brandon and I'm social media manager for a digital magazine app in Midtown Manhattan called Zinio. Looks a little something like this. My question for you is how do we leverage content from 5,000 plus magazines to throw jabs at a millennial customer whose attention is typically away from magazines? Thanks so much for your answer. You keep answering questions, I'll keep asking them. Brandon, I have a couple things. One, you're an av- avocado ambassador. I need to figure out what that means. You're also a Mets fan, but I didn't see any Jets love, and I'm very concerned that you might be one of those rare pe- people that are Mets and Giant fans who I hate oh so much. Uh, I, uh, I didn't fully get the context of the question. I'm not sure if you guys got it. Obviously, you guys picked it. I didn't fully understand what the objective was of the magazines. Was he referring to how do we make micro-digital context that actually gets people to care about a magazine, um, meaning like s- buying a subscription to a mag. I mean, actually, I'm pretty curious. While we're here, where is your magazine life right now, Andy K? Zero. Zero. 100%. Nothing. 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 Zero. Zero. Dunk. Five percent. What do you? What magazine would you magazine consume? Sweden. Swedish and Swedish, Swedish magazines yeah. that you read. Fashion magazines, yeah. That you'll look at. Look every. So that comes to your home and you'll do that? Yes. And it has 5% of your kind of like world, you think? Is your gut? 2.5, yes. 2.5, got it. D-Rock? No. Zero. Other Tyler? Maybe like two or three. Like what, what do you consume? Like photography and design magazines a little bit. You'll flip through it a little bit. Yeah. How about, compared to, like, how, how, how about compared to 24 months ago? Even less? Even, yeah, even less. Dunk? Compared to 24 months ago, even less? Same. Same? India? No, less. Same. Less, less. India? Same, like a couple. What do you have? The New Yorker and then like an art magazine. Playgirl? Oh. I'm kidding. 
Why do you tease me? Because <laughs> I like you. So what do you, you know, so The New Yorker? Yes. Um, and do you read that? Yeah. And it's not just collecting, like do you, do you think you read as much New Yorker today than you did 24 months ago, 36 months ago? And because there's a scenario where you like it, like weekend morning coffee kind of thing, Perfect or Subway magazine. Perfect Subway, got it. Look, I think you know that's obviously a small focus group. I just think it's a. I mean, if you were talk, and I don't know Brandon, F, so that's where I'm gonna have to go. If you're talking about the notion of what kind of content can we put out, jabs, in an ecosystem that is gonna get millennials excited about then going into the magazine world and subscribing to a magazine, I think that's a lost cause. I really do. And I think the magazines that have anybody's attention right now, I bet you if we could take these three wonderful people's brains and put them here and dissect how they cared about the Photographer magazine, the New Yorker, and these Swedish magazines, it had a lot more to do with what those brands did to them 10, 15 years ago and that's the problem. They, they thought these were cool magazines when they were in junior high. They were around in the house. The New Yorker's an iconic thing. Like, I, I, I think it's a very difficult proposition and as digital and mobile devices have become more mag- magazineized, aka photos have become such a foundation of the way we consume the internet versus written words of a decade ago, I think you're, you're, you're fighting an uphill battle, my friend. Yeah, just, yeah. Hey Gary, I'm Sam, I'm from Nigeria. I'm living in San Francisco. He said I'm soft. And my question for you is, were you too soft to start a mobile development agency, bruh? Was that too hard for you, bruh? <laughs> bruh? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I love that whole, do, are you blank, do you even lift, bruh? Uh, so, did he say, am I too soft to start a mobile? Development agency. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to say, I want to I wanna fight you yeah. is really what I want to do. But yeah, I mean, look, I think, um, I think that to answer it in a, in a straight way, the reason building a development shop in a genre is not interesting to me is that I would, if, if I was to build a development shop in a meaningful way right now, I would build a messenger development shop way before I'd build a mobile app shop. Bruh, because I don't care about you know 2016 you know legacy software. To me, the reason I built the company I built is that, unlike a VCR or a video game console or a cell phone or virtual reality, messaging is tried and true. The mechanism that delivers it gets killed eventually, right? So the guy, caveman Rick who took a rock and carved it into the cave, he was messaging and communicating, right? But the platform of the day where the eyeballs were, were inside the cave. And the smoke signals, and the written word, and a telephone, and a television, and a movie theater, and a cell phone, and a VR world, and apps within a cell phone. And so bruh, the reason I didn't go with a mobile development shop is it was just too small and I needed to win the communication game infrastructure that I can deploy against any mechanism that delivers the story, bruh. <laughs> I said that every episode we have to have a question that gets you a little fired. <laughs> you found it. That's awesome, by the way, thanks for the question. Gary V, what's, what's happening, man? My name is Bo Mashaki. I'm a real estate agent and a motivational blogger, and I have a question for you about self-awareness. Um, you've spoken a lot about this topic um, and how to gain self-awareness, and you've also touched on how meditation is a trend that's really gonna take over and be in every household in the near future. So what are your thoughts on how to gain self-awareness through meditation? I myself gained a lot of self-awareness and clarity on who I am and what my actual goals are through meditation. So what are your thoughts on how meditation can help you gain self-awareness? Thanks. Bo, thanks for the question. I think the answer is I believe. I believe I believe you. There would be no reason for you to make this video and lie. I believe that there's a lot of people that are gonna gain it. I'm a very, very, very strong advocate for way more discovery by the human race around understanding the brain and mental health, mental fitness, men- mental, 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 mental. I promise you that when it's all said and done for me, people will realize that that was the game that I won 
that that's the gift that I was given, that that was where I had all time skills. It's just we've grown up in a world, and I've for the last 40 years, when that wasn't the conversation. No, you know, people can tell if you're pretty or good at athletics. Nobody rolled up on me and like, yo bro, your brain is on point, right? Like it wasn't, you know, and, and, when, and I say that because when I say brain, I mean the mental pillars of emotional intelligence that are the foundation of everything I've been talking about for the last four years. You could tell me I'm good at school, memorizing something and regurgitating, that's not what we're talking about. It's having that centering, having that place, that energy that allows you to navigate through all adversity, not getting too high on your highs and not getting too low on your low. It's balance, it's the contradictions that make me me. I want awesomeness for everybody but I want to punch all of you in the face too because if you want to compete with me, you're going to lose and it's all that stuff, sorry India. And that's all that stuff. And so it's, it's all of that foundational stuff that um, we need a lot more for and if meditation through a process is what unlocks people to be happier, to be more grateful, to deploy more empathy, to do all the tried and true cliche things that would make the world awesome, awesome then we would be in a really, really good spot. And I don't believe that there's nirvana and it's gonna be perfect, but moving anything just a little bit really works. We've had world wars. Like we've had you know, epidemics. We've had you know, enormous atrocities. We continue to do them in the world today. There's genocide and things. I mean, what, people are confused. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm all bouty bouty. I don't even know why I said that, but I was thinking about Master P the other day. I'm all about all about people understanding that mental health, um, meditation, all these things have a lot of upside and that we do not understand anything about the brain currently. Just an enormous, vast opportunity for us over the next century to learn more about this and, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm excited and grateful that my great, 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 great grandchildren will live in a world where that will be understood far more uh, in a substantial way in the way that people died from disease that we so easily navigate through today, all these unhappy people and all these tragedies and all these negatives that are completely, completely coming from the fact that the mental status of that person isn't in the best place it could be are gonna be an amazing challenge for our, for our, for our race, for our world, for who we are as humans and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm really into it and I really bank that that is where so much of my happiness comes from. I'm, I'm actually quite sad that I'm not gonna be able to see it where it's gonna be 100 years from today. Unless somebody figures out some technology and I'm into it, I'd be pumped to be a buck 40. I will Yoda this fucking world up. Um, but, um, and so that's that. I would love to look like Yoda. So, so not how long you look is what he looks like? Well, I mean, I just, the punchline there is like, if you told me I could live to 840 and it would be like Yoda or Crane from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles where I'm just a brain and a machine, but I know what's up, I'd be into that. Either, either option or you want Yoda over the brain? Well, I'd probably take Yoda only because he's still like a complete thing and I'd right, yeah. badass Kane and be like, hey, India. You know, but like, oh, we're, <laughs> yeah, you're still there. <laughs> Yeah, you're still around. That's everything. Well, because if I figured it out, I'd, I'd pass it on to you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I prefer you live. Oh, that's nice. Yes. That's question nice. of the day, because this is actually an interesting question, because I actually think this last little rant is not for everybody. If you could control it, if I told you, psst, weird thing, India's a genie from the future and can make anything happen, in the comments section, and just go, you don't have to, you can, you can justify it, you can do whatever you want, but just the number's fine by me. If you could control it, at what age do you want to die? How long do you want to live? What number? Andy? On the spot, let's go, quick, let's go. 120. Dunk? Infinity is the only non-answer allowed. 140. 140. Yeah. Other Tyler? Uh, 150. At least 500. <sighs> no, I'm like 100. A hundred, yeah. You're so, you're so, you're so that. That that was. I would have bet the farm on that. You're you're, you're counterculture. You're like, oh, I don't know. It's right. I don't know. Mine's. So that. I think mine would be eight hundred eighty-eight. Not something that. You keep asking questions. I'll keep answering.